Welcome to Carbonite Bounty BS, guys. We're me and the nerds here. We're glad to have you guys all back with us for our season four wrap up of episode 17 to 22. So, hope everybody had a good week. But before we get going here, uh, let's toss it over to DP and let you guys know where to find us at. Nerdsacopedia.com, people, make sure that you go on the Dirt War website where you are, um, follow us on all our favorite pot, I mean, <laughs> podcasts and stuff um, at nerdsacopedia.com. Um, I'm just like, trash and messing this all <laughs> you're allowed one outtake out of like 50 <laughs> uh, 50 of these oh, I mean, man, it says, it says, mortal Kombat just like threw me off anyway make sure you guys are going to nerdsacopedia.com and you are following us on instagram facebook and also on twitter make sure that you are listening to us on all, all your favorite podcast outlets stitcher iHeartRadio, radio tune in apple podcast google play wherever you listen to your favorite podcast we are there Leave us some feedback, nurse at nursecyclopedia.com. We love getting your emails and getting all the feedback from you and also, you know, regurgitating it back out to you. Make sure that when you're on Facebook, you are joining up on the Carbonite Bounty BS um, Star Wars podcast, um, Star Wars um, group, because we got some really good memes. We got some really good, you know, information and get some really good group feedback. Love the feedback on there. And if you are watching us on YouTube, make sure you're hitting that notification button. So anytime we're on, you know that we're on. There you go. Bam. Professional. Appreciate, That's how you do appreciate it. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. All right. And before we get going here, guys, we're going to give you a quick episode synopsis of the last five episodes we covered. So before that, we're going to toss this over to our uh, preview show runner. Our candidate is going to read out and give you guys a quick synopsis of the last few episodes we just covered. So Space Brother searches for space sister against a band of mercenaries fighting for some bounty uh nice end to the season not my favorite ending to the past you know this this one i think kind of i, I was expecting a bigger um uh, lift at the end it just sort of they tied up at loose ends they tied up the story the brother and the sister reunited there was a little fight on the uh the ship a lot of explosions um nice ending but no real big cliffhanger to me i actually rewatched the last episode again just to see if i missed some but it just kind of like this ended and then so not my favorite ending to the this is probably the weakest of the four seasons um but still good good content boba fett in there getting a little more um you know we're seeing a little bit seeing him seeing him mature and where he's going to be um so that that i that i gravitated toward that more than anything else so pretty decent what about you hitch so for me like my favorite episode of this batch was probably the box i don't know what it was about that but the idea of these bounty hunters being in this terrible terrible death scenario you know at, at the mercy of yet another bounty hunter just re i really liked it it seemed like something that you could do all the time and it had this peculiar like horror feel you know uh they were trapped they couldn't get away bodies kept hitting the floor which is always from a writing perspective raises the stakes and i always appreciate when that happens and the violence wasn't random there was purpose to it which i which i like anytime and for me anytime you have cad bane on the in a set yeah i'm gonna be a happy camper because i just like cad a lot he's got a great dialect do you guys know yeah. what that like what that what that accent is i mean it's like Italian, a little bit of Russian. I mean, it's it's interesting. Like, what is his speak? What's his deal? What's his background? Anybody know? I think he's holding his no. nose. I think he's holding his nose like that, right? Something like that. <laughs> yeah, it, it it is like that. And there was one of those one of his species in the in A New Hope in the cantina in the background. There were two of them actually talking, um, no lines, but you could tell they were talking. And they both turned and noticed Han shoot Greedo. And they both kind of made a whatever species that was. A very interesting dialect. A very cool character. Mm, interesting. Yeah, He's a hat obsessed good. man. Loves his hats. Loves his hats. Loves his hats. How about Obi Wan Kenobi getting his ass kicked all over the place, <laughs> all over the galaxy, far, far away? Like it's his job. It's the only thing he does is just get punched in the face anymore. Yeah, Mitch loved that. A little bit. You know, a little bit. <laughs> That's it. I, I like this Obi Wan though, so I feel for him. It's just you know, he's more. Um, he's, he seems more cunning in this epi in in these episodes. You know, he's becoming wiser. 
it, it kind of leads you to believe that the big thing, like I said, that fall off for me is, and we've all talked about it. What happens when he goes to Tatooine? Like, does he have, does he, I mean, does he suffer loss? Did he fall in love with somebody? And, you know, it's just, it's weird to, where he goes from this character to like a uh, hermit shut off from the force or, you know, so I, I think that I'd like to see maybe this Han Solo story, although I don't know um, where that'll take take place will you know give us some more closure to the character but yeah i thought him as far as these episodes uh he wasn't too bad as far as the beating up i mean i kind of like the story how he he went undercover and it's more the detective type things we, we ask to see more of the jedi rather than just being you know war soldiers so i appreciated the last couple episodes and obviously the return of darth maul although i didn't like the dr octopus kind of pun but you know <laughs> i kind of I, I i appreciated it but aren't the like are his actual legs any better than the than the the insect legs he had? Like it seemed like he was more terrifying that way, and then like they you know apparently the force makes you be able to be a magical mechanic or whatever. <laughs> and then he's like yeah, he's like he stumbling around on him, butt. stumbling around, and why not just give him like an ankle? Like why do you got to make him look like some sort of like you know ostrich? Like, he looks like an ostrich running around on those things. So uh, so 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 I text you guys. I was like, okay, so that's why he had those legs in Solo. You know, so this is where he got that from, right? The mechanical legs? Yeah, the mechanical legs, because they yeah. showed Darth Maul and Solo, you know, yeah. with mechanical they, legs. They, this was tied into that, so yeah. The... Okay, so I I was very, very, um, I like that. I like, I like, I love tie-ins, you know, you know, when they can um, circle back and everything, because Solo came out after this, so that means they, yeah. they were paying attention to their canon. So I definitely appreciate that. Which lets you beg to differ. If he's alive, then how is Mace Windu dead? But that's another story for another day. We'll see. That's a, you never that's know another, what's going to happen. That's another happen. story. That's another story for another day. You never day. know what's going to happen on Star Wars. I mean, nobody's really dead. They're all they're magic. They're all wizards. Like They can all just come back to life. I mean, Yoda, we watched Yoda disappear and die on screen, and he'd burn a tree in 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 Episode 8. So it's like, you know, what, are they even really dead? Dead? Because they can talk to other characters and interact with the real world, so... Eh, I, I, everything's pretty much fair game in Star Wars, which is okay by me. Yeah, none of the Jedi ever die. Mm -hmm. um, I think the Sith, the Sith are the same. I mean, they just move on to a new, a new body, uh, something a new. Either, maybe they turn into a machine. Mm -hmm. uh, but the the Jedi, I mean, that that's what the, that's what Obi Wan said. He said he's they're not they're not dead. They just become one with the Force, so they can literally move on and keep going forever and ever and ever. Nobody dies. I want to see Mace back because I like the guy. Yeah. You know what's an interesting parallel while we're getting into this, guys? How about the parallel of Asaz Ventress being basically ousted uh, by the Night Sisters and Mother Townsend? And similar to what happens to um, Ahsoka Tano and her yeah. kind of uh, outcast in the Jedi Council, very similar characters. And the same thing happens to both of them. I, how, how did you feel about that? I mean, kind of yeah. felt for her. She had a hard time with this group too. She kept wanting to take control, and they were like, "Uh, uh, yeah, we're, yeah, you're yeah." Pulling that, you're not pulling that here. These these heist episodes are always so cool, and it's so funny to have like it's so funny when a Jedi shows up in one of these scenarios, and they're obviously like tremendously overpowered. Like you know what I mean? Like it's just none of these people are going to be able to do anything to her, and she's just like uh, like she rolls her eyes and gets the lightsaber out and starts cutting them. She's like, "Oh, I'm back here. It's all this stuff's going on." And it's it's her plan, and you can tell that like the the, the ninjas that are getting by her. I, I'm just going to use that word because <laughs> I don't know what else to call them. They're ninjas. So these these space ninjas are getting by her. It's obvious she's just let, kind of letting them, right? She can just destroy, kill all these centipedes or whatever whenever she wants. So it's always so funny to see a Jedi in, in one of these you know prototypical Star Wars heist uh, situations. I always think that's great. And any time that you can you, you see Boba Fett. You know, get his comeuppance. I think I think that's going to be hilarious. No matter how many times they do that, <laughs> I'm always going to think it's funny to watch something bad happen to that kid. I don't know. Why. And those, I those, the, the swords that they had, vib the Viber swords, that was a cool weapon. It was sort of a dark saber type of thing, but a Viber, like a Viber axe or Viber blade. They were. Yes. It was a cool weapon. That is specifically what I'm talking about. When she cuts all the swords in half, <laughs> they're just kind of staring at him like, uh oh. 
yeah, she yeah, she's a really good character. I mean, I, I like the way that they develop her character specifically. I could see them actually bringing her into like live action somehow. So if, if they can, yeah, if they can pull that off, I would definitely love seeing that. Um, she had a really interesting turn because she's really bitter at what what went down with Do you know with Dooku. You know, um, and she's trying to find herself with her sisters. And then, you know, she ended up helping um, Obi-Wan. I was like, wow, OK, she's making a really good, you know, really um, interesting turn, you know, from total bad guy. She was just a bad from, um, you know, when we first seen her at the beginning of the series until right now. I mean, they're doing some really great, great character work with her. You know, she and she she her design is like, you know, decent and everything, too. Um I liked, um, I did like the Darth Maul ending. <laughs> I liked, I liked the fact that they changed the 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 logo from red from from yellow to red. Yeah. You know, to sort of ins to insinuate that these were two episodes that you had to really pay attention to because for whatever reason they felt that this was going to be their high. Because I do agree with you, Quint, uh, <laughs> that the um, it left you off with a cliffhanger where you would have thought they would have resolved it um begin, being that it was a season you know this we were capping off a whole season you would think it was some sort of revolution you know re resolution <clears throat> but you bring Darth Maul back in those last two episodes you knew it wasn't going to last for just a couple episodes um and his brother just finding him in a crazy state and everything and with the with the spider legs and stuff um just just really just some crazy stuff um and seeing him actually you know um um just being the the quiet force that Darth Maul is trying to get, you know, um, you know, Obi-Wan, you know, revenge on Obi-Wan and everything. And then seeing, you know, a size team up with Obi-Wan. I, I, I liked, I, I, I liked that episode. I mean, I like that whole scenario right there. A pretty good lightsaber duel too, that we're treated <laughs> mm -hmm. to a lot of the, the sabers flat. I like it when there's a lot of like saber shuffling in a duel like that. Right. That's very interesting. It's like a little extra, like a little extra flourish that I like when they put in there, right? Because you can keep it standard, but you know, the blue, the red, red not being my color was actually a pretty good line. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that yeah. line a lot. Um, I I like that Darth Maul. The wild card of his like appearance here is so crazy because he knows who he knows who Sidious is, and there's like a really small like group of people that are kind of know what the big play is, right? Maybe it's them, perhaps, right? That, that 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 knows who the Palpatine is Sidious, him and um you know I I mean obviously Dooku knows who who Sidious is but he's not in on the big play because I think there's some sort of betrayal that'll happen we'll see about that I guess but it's interesting to see all this Palpatine jealousy in a series of episodes where they sort of have Palpatine's like like the gravity of his malevolence makes an appearance where every single person that's supposed to be around him is starts bickering right away like they just hate like it's like he's this this like a uh, splinter in any group, right? Where he just sort of exacerbates all of the, all of the conflict. And that is such great attention to detail in long-term writing, because obviously you want to foreshadow that he's a, he's an agent of chaos. Exactly. You know, you put Palpatine in the room. I mean, he knows exactly what he's doing and, you know, it's just smirking. He, they, I love the way they animate him because he just has his little smirk on his, his, his mouth all the time. <laughs> like he's just up to no good so you just you just see that you know palpatine is just like you know just that dude all right and with that being said guys we're going to head over to our intermission break here and we're going to come back we're going to wrap up our thoughts on season four and we're going to prep you guys for guess what season five so we're over halfway there two more seasons to go but we'll return right after this short intermission to uh, wrap up these uh, last couple thoughts on these uh, last batch of episodes. Be right back, guys. Mortal Kombat! That's right. This week on the Nerd Psycho comic flick show, Mortal Kombat. You played it in the 90s. Now you can watch it in the 20s. And that's right. They're going to be fighting. They're going to be ripping people's spines out. People are going to be frozen and shattered into a million pieces. And if you don't watch, we're going to send Scorpion to your house. And he's going to tell you... Get over that's here! Right. NCFS this week. For flavors, you know, this is something I know I was specifically asking for in Mandalorian, so it's cool for me. Watch him do this stuff. I'm liking it. I dig it, man. Dioxith. They they introduce a lot of things that we, you know, get familiar with. 
like Phantom Menace and yeah. different. <clears throat> how do you kill really bad, like really tough to kill people? Gas. That's always good. Gas them all. Wow. And here we get like another stretch of episodes with no Anakin and um, well, very little Anakin and uh, Ahsoka. He just you gets know. lunch pretty much, right? Is that the only yeah, thing that's, he that's, does? You know, and says he senses something in the forest. I mean, I sense <laughs> something terrible about this diner. <laughs> <laughs> like, give me that. This, sand, this ham sandwich is too fatty. That's what it is. <laughs> he said, "You know, we got to stop to eat somewhere, right?" <laughs> Why is this bacon? This bacon isn't crispy at all. That's, I have a terrible. I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> It isn't. <laughs> Let me get some toast for you. I'd pay attention to uh, May the 4th. Um, I don't know. They got some big plans of releasing some stuff. So keep your eyes peeled on Twitter and their uh, Instagram. <clears throat> I'm excited, yeah. man. This Disney has a big, they have a big toy release coming out, obviously, for May the 4th. But um, yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> the whole day. We just gonna podcast the whole day on May the Fourth. <laughs> yeah. What day of the week is it? Tuesday. But on Tuesday. A Tuesday, May Fourth, a twenty-four mm-hmm. hour show of just us watching all the shows and being exhausted, just That's staring, funny. just just staring straight ahead because we can't put the we obviously can't broadcast the actual movies because we would definitely get sued. Yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> so, we're taken down for that. So we'd have to do it'd just be us zombily staring at stuff. Who knows? Too long. That's too much podcasting. Hey, we'll be we'll podcasting that night though. So we'll do That's this again on like next Tuesday. So. That is true. We will definitely be dropping an episode on the Ford. But yeah, these these batch episodes were um still still a you know, good end to the season. Um, I, I I like I said I would have liked for it to end on a better note. Um, but I did like the past the last two episodes. Um, you know, with with Maul and his brother, you know, yeah, so, Savage. It, it, always, it always feels with this show that like this is the like they had a deadline and it's like well this is how many episodes we got done before the deadline but we're gonna we already did like the next like the next 10 are already been storyboards or whatever you know what i mean maybe yeah. those two are already recorded so they don't it doesn't like there's this the the season breaks don't seem to matter with the story you know what i mean they just happen right. whenever they got done with that work a little arbitrary yeah yeah i mean um, I mean, I already seen like the um, the 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 blurb for like the next episode, so it's gonna go more into you know Savage and Maul. As like as I was like, you could have put that on the end of um, season four, <laughs> you know, to sort of cap off that arc there and everything. So I'm just used to them doing like arcs. But since we're pretty much binging these episodes, these this is like just running together, you know, for the most part. Yeah. Right. Yeah. True. You don't have to wait too long. It's not like you would have wait like eight right. months to drop the next season. It's, it's well, it's already there. So mm-hmm. maybe we are doing this the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. T. Mitch, what, what, did you watch this live when it was on Cartoon Network? No. Hmm. Everybody I our age. I, I thought it was corny. <laughs> we were oh, done okay. with it. We were like, ah. After episode three, we we're all like, you know what? We're gonna take a break <laughs> from all this. <laughs> we all started stretched. I started drinking more. Ah, uh, thoughts. No, <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll uh, we'll dive back in here. We'll wrap things up. Maybe go over some industry news, and we'll we'll pop off of here. So, who wants to lead us out the break? You want me to, or yes? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're better looking. Appreciate it. We're all on the camera. Yeah. Ken, like we're it's the we all are, we're pretty much the same size. I, I just want to maybe we should change that. <laughs> just kind of. Do a do a little adjustment here. Oh no, I, I can't. I don't even have the wrong box. Ah, guys. What what is there to say about Star Wars? We haven't said it's like so bizarre. Like you know, we have it. We have a, a scorned apprentice. We have all these people, you know, that are sort of it was milling around this idea that there's something wrong. Something's going wrong with all of this. That it doesn't seem right. And then we have Palpatine's. You know, is Palpatine's plan foiled? Is this whole thing just just what is his end game if he gets captured by Dooku there? You know what I mean? Is it to force a settlement and then the Separatists take over? Like, what's the deal? I, I that, That's one question I had is like, was all of that one big, long, elaborate setup? Or, you know, just to try to, was it just to try to cleave Anakin away from the council? Is that the whole point of it? Or is there some other game that he was playing with Dooku where Dooku, he'd actually would be successful kidnapping? What's the deal there? 
You know, when I thought about this, I thought about um, episode two and episode three more than when he, uh, and we'll get in that when we watch episode three, but as uh, Obi-Wan was captured and Dooku was explaining to him, now the more I think about it, I mean, they've tried, he tried to really get Anakin away from, I think, Sidious because he knew what was happening. I, at this point, Dooku knows that the Emperor is done with him. Um, and he sees his power kind of diminishing and how Anakin getting stronger, as he says, uh, in, in an on-screen duel. So I think the play here, like you're saying, the what if would have been, what if something happened to Anakin or they kind of foiled his plot? What, what would be the play at that point? Because we know at the Sith with World of Two, I mean, there was really no other apprentice, you know, at the point that we know of that would rise to help Sidious. So it would be Dooku, Obi Wan, and you know, Dooku would obviously wouldn't be back in the council. But would you forgive somebody who kind of used dark side powers and foiled the plot of the Emperor? Because remember, at this point, he's the only one that knows about him. The Jedi are still blind. We're fighting wars and battles and. Our minds are clouded is what while Dooku's hinting to them that something's wrong, but he doesn't because of his, you know, ousting of the Jedi Council want to help them fully. So he's like an anti-hero at this point, I think. I definitely think there's something to Palpatine's like favor being very, very important to these guys, because I think it definitely you can tell when. Like when they like when when Maul loses favor with Palpatine, he gets cut in half. You know what I mean? Because it's like, oh nope, that now there's a new apprentice that I could take. Because that's when Anakin shows up, right? So as soon as he knows about him, boom, Maul's gone. Uh, th- these people are ruthless, and and Palpatine has this power that's like a coordination power. You know what I mean? It's a it's a, it's it's like battle meditation is what they call it in Star Wars. And he can make he can make things happen that sh- shouldn't be able to happen, and coordinate things that you shouldn't be able to coordinate. And when he stops, like, putting his finger on the scale, things don't go your way. And we see Dooku brought pretty low in this set of episodes, right? Driving in agony, almost wishing for death. Sending his, sicking his dog, you know, G- Grievous, on this on this um, coven of witches. As yeah. I said, if he yeah. starts digging ditches, I'm going to start looking for a Dragula. Yeah. Uh, really, really enjoy, enjoy that whole, like, uh, it's weird horror show, right? We have, we have all these flavors and that was like almost like a Halloween sort of special, right? We have witches and zombies. Wild stuff, man. And Bane, and which Bane. is <laughs> which is zombies yeah. and Bane. You know, what you, what you were saying, I don't know that was was did Sidious Sidious really consider Maul like his apprentice because didn't he have Dooku on the side? Hmm. Yeah, it was a weird thing because like we're saying there's a rule of two, but I, I it, Right. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I think because, just a. I think he was just a. What's the word? A uh, maybe a muscle scare tactic. You know, right. I don't think it was the real, uh, per, like the real apprentice, the real weapon. I think he was just use it as a as a distraction, maybe to get the. I mean, he was ultimately his goal was to take out Qui Gon and Obi Wan. I mean, obviously that was the the big conflict and kidnap Anakin, right? I mean, he was, that was, that was the end game. I mean, he was, he was yeah. fine. Mm-hmm. Anakin. So, so, so Hitchar is what you're asking is this whole play this long, um, insidious plot that he has mm-hmm. is his own end game just to, 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 um, get to Anakin. Right. You know, it so, would seem that this elaborate thing just to get to Anakin is, is real minuscule when it comes to, Palpatine, because he seems like a big picture guy, you know. So for to just concentrate on Anakin and solely, it, uh, I, I think I, I right. think I see what you're saying a little bit. Here's here's why I think he's doing it. So Palpatine needs, <laughs> like, we know from Episode Nine that he is one entity. He's all the Sith lords of all time, right? He's like the Sith, the Sith continuum, almost like Q from Star Trek. We'll never say Star Trek again on this show. Sorry, guys. Uh, so he's he's a continuum of evil. Sith. So what he needs Anakin for, the reason he's after Anakin, the reason he's after Luke is because they're incredibly sensitive, force sensitive beings. And they're also very like that. That's like the vehicle that that entity wants to be in. Right. Cause it would make it the most powerful. So the real clone wars, the whole point of the clone wars is to put Anakin in a position where he will turn to the dark side. Almost the rest of it, the, the taking over of everything and you know, the, the machinations behind the scene to become the president 
is almost secondary to everything he's doing to make sure that Anakin is not like really folded into the Jedi really tight, right? And and and, and remember, Palpatine has almost precognition. He can see what's going to happen. So why is he going after Obi Wan and Qui Gon and Phantom Menace? Because Qui Gon would have sn would sniff out the problem because he uses the Living Force, and because right. Obi Wan is the one who is eventually going to mess up Vader, right? He's the one that's going to take this excellent like um the chosen one this uh, this vessel that palpatine and the evil sith want to pour their being into and destroy it and ruin it and so he can't use it i mean if palpatine has a total control of everything and anakin's bending to his will and he can take anakin's body over before he's mauled by uh, obi-wan kenobi this is the ultimate resolution for him so when I see this plot, you know, I, there's no way that Dooku's leaving leaving Naboo with, with Palpatine ever. And the end result is Anakin doesn't trust the Jedi Council as much. Right. Yeah. And there's a trail of, awesome, of bodies and awesome action. And at the end of the day, no matter what happens, the thing is that Obi-Wan lied to Anakin. So the one person that he should trust the most has definitely betrayed him and he knows it. Right. And that makes sense when you tie the movies into these last couple episodes and, and what we're talking about, because Palpatine's play is, you know, and he's they've questioned this as the council. The Jedi are, you know, peacekeepers. Now we've seen the Clone War is Palpatine says, well, let's put them in war and see how they are. So now as every battle happens, Anakin questions Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan, why are we doing this? And as he says, you know, be patient, be patient. But this is already driving Anakin away because the deal the jedi didn't want him to be a master already when he wanted to go through the trials they're going against everything they've told him so that's already created a doubt and Tidia sees it so i can understand how they peeled him away so easily because they have the jedi running around like headless chickens <laughs> yes. mm. headless magical chickens <clears throat> i mean i mean they have they have a lot of uh they have a lot of power. They they're they are uh you know they're very very skilled but now they're out of their element because now they're fighting right. war. And that's not what they're supposed to be doing. That's not their that's right. not their directive. They're supposed to keep peace. They're supposed to investigate crime and stop. They're supposed to protect society. Mm -hmm. They're not supposed to fight for anything, except they're just supposed to protect the, the Clone Wars, I think, was a huge step at destroying the Jedi. And I think that's that's the whole that's the whole thing. That's why Palpatine initiated this and forced everyone into battle because he knew that this was going to bring down all the Jedi. And it did, it did destroy them all. And, and everyone was afraid of them after that. Nobody trusted them. Like anytime a Jedi came into a, a, a cantina or a bar and drew their lightsaber, people thought oh, it's a, it, you know, they're, uh, they're up to no good. Um, it's a very, very skilled the way he turned a good element and made the reputation, soiled the reputation and, and ruin the entire Jedi history for forever. Yeah. Watch I the grand jump. plot. The grand Sith plot come together <clears throat> in the hands of the master. And just listen to him say these sly, like these sly asides. Like everything he says is designed. It's like a headshot. You know what I mean? He's like, Oh, I've been, your wife has been hosting me pretty much is what he says to Anakin. You know what I mean? I know all her business. I know all your business. Right. So obviously uh -huh. he's like, I know you're together. Like, right. He just is he's he's just shading all these things because remember acceptance of that relationship would be a big deal to Anakin. A big deal, right? It would really solve one of the big like contradictions in his character, which is that he's hiding this, that he doesn't want to hide. So Palpatine essentially telegraphing him that, look, when I'm in charge, this ain't gonna be a problem. I mean it's a it's a big thing. It's a big thing to dangle in front of Anakin. And and and, and because Palpatine is himself and we know everything he says is designed to have that impact. So it's not accidental. <laughs> None of this is accidental. It's all put together. It's really neat. Right. Like I said, with us leaving, you know, ending on that cliffhanger here um, and, and kind of getting into our preview for next week of episode, or excuse me, season five, um, I think there's only, what, 20 episodes of five, so we can do, what, seven? Yeah, seven the first seven, one? And... Or, let's see, yeah. Seven, seven, and six. Yeah, we can do seven, seven, and six. Yeah, but uh, you know, obviously, we've left with the cliffhanger. So, you know, what? Just kind of uh, wrapping up today's episode and, and peeking into next week's episode. 
What are some of the things you guys want to see as far as character development in season five as we wrap this up here? We'll go around the horn and we'll start at DP this time. What, what do you want to see as far as out of the characters uh, moving into season five? I was excited to see Darth Maul and have some of my questions from Solo answered. So love seeing that and want to see more of, you know, Darth Maul. I'm excited to get back to Mandalore. You know, I want to see some more Mandalorian stuff. So I'm um, anxious and, you know, um, I know I'm going to be rewarded. So, yeah. What about you, Hitch? So I want to see Anakin get dirtier. I want to see them push him further. I want to see some, you know, guys know what the trolley problem is? Where, like, you can throw a switch and kill one person or let the trolley crash and everyone on the trolley dies, right? You can switch it. That, that's kind of the idea. I want to see some conundrums like that for Anakin. I want to see him put in positions where he can't win. And I want to see what that does to him. That's what I want to see. What about you, Ken? I'd like, I want to see more Maul. Uh, see where he is now after he's, you know, he's sort of come back. How about Anakin and Darth Maul throwing down? Oh, yeah. That would be mm. nice. Yeah. Because there we got we got history because Anakin knows about Darth Maul and what Darth Maul did to his mentor, you know, his hero. So, but now Anakin's kind of moving to that side, the dark side. So, how about that? How about two real evil dudes fighting to the death? More Boba Fett, and I want to see Tarkin back. Yeah. And I'm kind of along the side of uh, DP. You know, I, I want to see more Mandalore. A um, little more about Maul because I, there are questions that asked that answered for me that were in, you know, Solo. And as we said so many times, the writing of this stuff and how it's very linear to some of the things we've seen uh, post the movie release kind of tie up a lot more than I ever thought I would ever get as far as closure in some things. If, if that's the right thing, but uh right word to say, but yeah, I kind of just want to continue to see the characters grow. I'd like to see kind of when, because we obviously see Anakin being pulled. When does Ahsoka finally get her kind of um, her realization of what the Jedi Council is and what leads to her former, what leads to her exile from the the uh, Council as well? So those are kind of the points I hope to see uh, in this season five get answered. Yeah, it's going to be real interesting to see Ahsoka's descent. Um or uh, not descent, but you know, her right. ex um, when she's when she leaves and everything. So uh, right now she she she's really at a point where she's listening to everything and doing everything Anakin says and not really making any waves and stuff. But um, you know, as you alluded to, T. Mish, um, it's 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 almost it's about to be that time we we're we're heading into that end game, you know, or halfway through. <laughs> right. I still feel like. Episode three is the monster at the end of the book, just like the old. <laughs> like we yeah, are, we know. It's like, wait a minute. If you watch the next episode, you're gonna get one more story closer to Order sixty six, and it's just and that the the pressure of that is actually starting to mount, which I know it's supposed to. So, like it's like how much like like you see the Jedi clone combos getting stronger and stronger, and like you know, coming soon, <laughs> that's yeah. done. So it's 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 really ratcheting up the tension too. Right. And like I said, guys, I, I appreciate everybody coming on tonight. As DP said uh, multiple times, we uh, really like if you guys leave us some feedback. Uh, obviously, like, subscribe, and share on all our socials and interact with us as well. We really appreciate that from everybody, including Tom, our number one guy here. We appreciate everything you do for us. Um, and until next week, guys, which will be episodes one through seven, this is the way. This is the, the way. way. Yeah, but I mean, like, so what is, like, the best lightsaber color? Is it green, blue, red? Is it... Uh, you know what? I'm going to say this is crazy. I think my favorite lightsaber all time, I told you that, was raised at the end. That's crazy. That yellow that's, like, not really seen. Yeah, the no, yellow. The yellow I made, is... That made the movie. I still can't believe they're not going to continue that. Like, how does she drop that, like... Single bladed, it's gonna be double bladed late. Like the Mar Jade, come on. They show you that and that's it. That was like the biggest smack in the face for me. I'm sorry. Well, well you know, you know who vent. <laughs> I don't know how this all ends because I. Nerdcyclopedia.